हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू एफ ओ सी क्लास एलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व दिस वीडियो इज पार्ट सिक्स ऑफ यूनिट थ्री फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ जावा प्रोग्रामिंग फॉर क्लास ट्वेल्व इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी आई टी कोड एट जीरो टू If you want to purchase class 12 IT code 802 sample paper book the links are given in the description In our previous video we have started a new topic which is user defined methods and we have completed the methods topic also In this video we are going to cover the remaining topics which are invoking method arguments and void so let us begin this was the last topic that we were discussing in our video we were discussing about static method which was related to the invoking object so means without invoking an object we can call the method this was the use of the static method this we were discussing so now let us discuss that what is invoking how do we invoke a method all these things now we are going to study in detail so let us study about invoking method now a method is called or invoked from another method basically the method which is called or invoked it is known as call method and another method which is calling this method is called calling method so basically this called method is called or invoked from the calling method when a method is called control is transferred from the calling method to the called method so initially in the beginning before calling the control is with the calling method but when the method is called when this calling method will call the called method then the control will be transferred from calling method to called method now the statements inside the called methods body are executed means initially the control was with the calling method and when this calling method calls or invokes the called method then the control is transferred from calling method to called method and when the control is transferred then the statements which are inside this called methods body the statements will be executed and after the statements are executed control is returned back to the calling method so the control was now with called method now it will again go back to the calling method now let us call or invoke the rectangle area method from the main method this will be an example by which you can clearly understand how to invoke a method so let us see in our previous video we had studied how to write a method and how to declare it as a static method what are its part all these things we were discussing in the previous video in this video we will be calling the same rectangle area method let us see the coding for it this is the coding that we have to do to call the rectangle area method let us understand this coding in more detail basically the coding that we had just seen had various parts and some of the parts are arguments now what are arguments let us see now when we call or invoke the rectangle area method then we have to supply with arguments what are arguments basically when we are calling any method then we have to supply some values and these values are known as arguments so in our this example rectangle area method what are the arguments we will supply the length and the breadth of the rectangle so basically length and breadth will act as arguments in the method call now the arguments were length and breadth and as you must remember in our previous video we had discussed a term called parameters what are parameters basically inside a method they act just like local variables so here the value which we are going to provide for length and breadth these values will be copied into parameters 
here in place of length there will be a certain value and in place of breadth there will be another certain value so these value will be copied into parameters so here we have provided 45.5 as length and 78.5 as breadth and as we just discussed that whichever value we are going to provide it will be copied into its parameter so this value is for length so it will be copied into parameter length and this value 78.5 is for breadth so it will be copied into parameter breadth so whichever value we are using it will be copied into the same parameter here it is explained by the example here you can see these are the values so 45.5 is copied into the parameter length and 78.5 is copied into the parameter breadth now when the method is executed then the return value from the method is copied into variable a basically till now we have provided arguments and arguments are the values which will be copied into the parameters so when we will execute this method then there will be a value which will be returned as a result so this value is called return value so this return value from the method will be copied into variable a why because this a is basically denoting the rectangle area let us understand basically a was indicating rectangle area and we know that a is a variable and also we have studied in our previous video that variable changes its value during the run time so when we are going to execute the method then this variable a will take up the value which will be returned after the product of 45.5 and 78.5 why these two values because these two values are basically the arguments and these arguments are used to calculate the required result and what was the result basically we had to calculate the rectangle area and what is rectangle area it is the product of length and breadth so the product of 45.5 and 78.5 it is displayed as a so a will get the value 3571.75 this is the value that will be copied to a so till now we had studied the coding in parts let us see the whole coding in one go so here is our coding first of all as we always write the package statement we have written it after it the public class statement the class name and starting with curly braces now there is a change what is the change the change is that the public static void statement is not written directly after the public class statement in fact there is a coding in between now why is this so it is because we are using the user defined methods here in all our previous example which we had discussed in previous concept previous video in all those example we were writing the coding and when we were writing we were using this public static void statement just after the public class statement but it was because we were not using the user defined methods so here we have used our own defined method that is why we are going to write the coding in this way here after the public class statement we have written this static method as we had discussed in our previous video and after it in the public static void statement we have written the method to call the rectangle area method from the main method basically by this coding we are calling the rectangle area method from the main method now let us see the output as we had used the system dot out dot print ln statement so basically as we know that it is used to print something so it will display the area in the output window we had already written this statement in the inverted comma and area of the rectangle is equal to this statement is already displayed and after it the variable a or we can say the value of the variable a is being displayed 
Why? Because we had given it in our system dot out dot println statement. And if we call the rectangle area method with different arguments, we will get a different result. Means if we are going to give the different values as arguments, which will be copied into parameters, then we are going to get a different result for the rectangle area method. Now let us study about void. It is the last topic of the video. With this topic, we will be finishing the topic user defined methods. And in our next video, we will be starting with the new topic. First of all, let us find answer to the question. What is void? Basically void is a special return type return type. What does return type means? Basically return type defines the data type of the value that we will get in return after the execution of a method. Let me explain what I have I just told. Basically, whenever we are going to execute a method, then a value will be returned as the output. So that specific value will have a data type. So that data type is defined by return type. So its name is also indicating return type means it is the type of return. So we can say that it defines the data type of the return value. Now why is void a special return type? Let us discuss about it. Basically, it is due to the purpose we use it. Why do we use it when the method does not return any value? Just think yourself. What have I told about the return type and what is the use talking about in the return type? I told you that it is defining the data type of the return value. But here I am telling that void is used if method does not return any value. So how is it possible? that if we do not get any value and we have its data type and that is the main reason why we are using void basically it is sometimes possible that the method is not returning any value and in that case if any value is not being returned so of course it will not have any data type and for this purpose we are defining the void as a special return type because it is going to be used when the method will not have any return value but still the void will be acting as a return type a special return type let us see it through an example now let us discuss the example method that just prints a string need not have a return value can use void as the return type first of all recall why do we use the void we use void in case a method does not have a return value so in this example, when we only want to print a string in this example, the method is not returning any value means the method has not any return value. So that is why we can use the void as the return type here. So here is the coding that we have written. First of all, we have used the keyword void. Why have we used it? We have used it to indicate that the method is not having any return value for this purpose for indicating this we have used void and after it we are having in the next line the system dot out dot print ln statement why are we having it basically here we want to print a string and we already know that to print something we have to use this statement and inside the bracket we have written the statement and also here the string so this is how we are going to use the void. This method can be called with a statement such as as we are discussing about calling and invoking methods in our video. So here we are given with an example with a example of statement which will call this method. So we can call this method with a statement like print message and then in bracket this is a secret message. So this is a statement which can be used to call this method and this method it was using void so it is a special return type here we have discussed about it how is it a special return type why because it is used if the method does not have a return value and in this case the method is not having any return value it will only print a string and that is why we have used void here
and this method can be called with the statement like this. If you want to purchase class 12 IT code 802 sample paper book, the links are given in the description. So that was all for today. We'll meet you soon in the next video. Till then, bye bye.